So despite the fact that I had a massive assignment that occurred midway through the month and the fact that I stopped selling options for about seven to 10 days, I still generated cash flow at a level much higher than most dividend investors out there. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the Average Joe Investor Channel. So today we're recapping my cash flow results for the month of September 2024. And I'll admit I'm a little late getting this video up, but I also wanted to be fully transparent as I've been in the past. September 2024, not a good month but I was still cash flow positive. Had an issue I'll walk through with you guys in this video and was also on a cruise for 12 days with limited internet access. Without further delay, let's dive into the details. Really quick, let's make sure we're on the same page regarding the strategy. For the month of September, my strategy is different than what it is now. On that note, make sure to stick around all the way to the end of the video because I will be breaking down for you guys the change in strategy moving forward and the big why as to why I'm doing that. The strategy in September was to generate as much cash flow as possible. And to do that, I was primarily utilizing the Russell 2000 ETF ticker symbol IWM. I was selling daily options. Also for the month of September, I had four regular contracts of IWM plus a fifth contract, which was based on a poor man's covered call, which is like a covered call where you own the shares and then you sell covered calls, but instead you purchase a deep in the money call option to replicate or to synthetically create a long position in the underlying stock or ETF. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into the results. We're looking at the September 2024 max cash flow spreadsheet, which is available for members of the Patreon community. If you're interested, check out the link down in the description below to learn more. So here we can see that for the month, first part of September, the spreadsheet reflects that things were going pretty well. All positive cash flow, which you can see right here in, sec in column C. Working with IWM, you can see some of the trades were traditional, like covered calls, cash secured puts. Um, all, all of them were covered calls though here for the uh, month of September through this point here. And some of them were performance covered calls, some traditional. And you can see the number of contracts here, amount of cash flow, um, was generating pretty good cash flow on a daily basis here in excess of $100 most days minimum. And you can see that things got a little bit hairy for me right around September 12th, which is ironically when I left on our cruise. Now you can see starting right here on 912 and through about 916, things were really hairy for me because I had to roll right here for a net debit significant, right? I had sold initial credit of what, $69. I had to roll for a net debit of $851 to avoid assignment. And then the next day I had to do the same thing, another net debit here of 262 in total. Then I had some positive days, then a few more negative days. And what had happened here was I had gotten assigned on IWM um, on a cash secured put at around 223 per share. And then IWM dropped all the way down to like 202, 203, and then was kind of slowly building back, but not very fast. So in that position, what I generally do is I sell covered calls still, but I do it at a, what I think would be a pretty conservative le level. So maybe uh, a 10 or 15 delta, usually two to three or maybe four strikes away from the, whatever the market price is at the time. However, things got away from me. There were large moves in IWM and I had to start rolling for a net debit until eventually things came to a head. So while I was on the cruise, I had limited access to uh, internet and as a result here, um, I was actively managing my trades. Uh, key lesson here, by the way, is don't actively trade while you're on vacation if you can help it, especially if you have spotty internet access like you do on a cruise ship. So what happened here is right here on the 18th, I got assigned. You can see right here, I got assigned on the 20th, it was actually on the 18th, and the price per share was 217, which was $600 or $6 per share below my cost basis, times uh, not 100 shares or one contract, but four contracts, which is essentially a $2,400 loss that was realized. One of the things I did to offset this was right here, the poor man's covered call long call option that I had here, I was able to sell for a pretty large profit to help offset the losses here, which occurred right here as well. So that was plus 43.41, but that was not the total profit, that was just the net gain. I had to still subtract how much I paid for it in the beginning. So if we jump back over to the spreadsheet, you'll see here that um, I had total three different assignments right here. Total net of those transactions here was a loss of $1,004.17. So still painful, but thanks to that poor man's covered call that I was able to close for a profit, I minimized the damage. And then you'll notice here what's kind of interesting is um, not until the 26th that I sell anything new. And that's because I was still on the cruise we're still trying to kind of, I just resolved that big issue. And then you'll notice right here on the 26th, that's when I actually started selling 
a new position. So what happened here was I was still on my cruise and I was thinking, man, I finally got out of this position that netted me a loss of $1,000. And I kind of wanted to take some time to rethink what the strategy was moving forward. Because there were some things I'd been thinking about and hadn't actually executed on, especially because I was still in IWM and I was deep um, underwater on my cost basis. But since I was out of that, uh, granted for a loss, I decided to then take a few days to really think through how I wanted the strategy to change. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick sneak peek here into the Discord community, which is part of the Average Joe Investor Patreon community, um, just to kind of look at what my strategy changes were and how I kind of articulated them in the community. So the things that I wanted to talk about here was, well, what I really wanted to dial in, what am I trying to accomplish here? How do I want to actually execute on them? So um, I kind of articulated here, one of the biggest goals I had was I wanted to utilize this portfolio as some of the cash that I can generate to be able to fully fund my retirement accounts moving forward. Not have to worry about doing that on a recurring basis out of my own cash flow because it's going to fluctuate at times with the business. And that included my Roth IRA as well as my self-employed 401k and my wife's Roth IRA as well. Uh, additionally here, uh, I wanted to be able to utilize some capital to actually pay for some recurring expenses. And one of the ways you heard about that was with the YieldMax account, which actually pays for my solar panel loan with $3,000 in capital. And then I also wanted to build out the ability to pay for my uh, car loan that I have as well that we got in advance of our recent big road trip across the country. And then of course, I also wanted to utilize portions of the portfolio as applicable to be able to test different strategies for the benefit of the Discord community and the YouTube audience. And so you've seen um, a few of these updates here actually on the YouTube channel. Um, the $1,000 Infinity Income Portfolio, the $3,000 Infinity Income Portfolio, which I recently posted about. The way that I'm actually able to fully fund the retirement accounts is with um, one contract of IWM. You can see here where I'm utilizing uh, $27,000 or 100 shares plus um, a 25% cash buffer um, as I need to replenish the account. So that's in play right now. And then I'm also working with a QQQ wheel position as well to generate about $50, $55 a month, which is being used to actually pay for the car loan plus a little bit extra to pay it off early. And then of course, if I have the ability to generate additional cash flow, that'd be for additional living expenses to smooth out income at times as well. So that was the reason why we had a little bit of a break, in, a gap here. And so the 26th through the 30th was actually implementing that strategy uh, a little bit here. Here you can see at the money IWM calls here where I'm generating 70, 100, 83, $120 here. Um, and that's towards that retirement contribution strategy, which I actually talked about in a separate YouTube video. And then you can see one contract here on 930, which is the beginning of the QQQ wheel strategy, where I'm generating about 50 to $55 a day as much as possible. And then of course I had a dividend right here for the month of $146.57, which was based on holding cash in the account. So in total, when you factor in all of this capital right here, um, all of the income, all of the losses, etc. Total gross option premium was seventeen twenty and seventy seven cents. However, when you factor in the losses from the capital losses there that I, I mentioned to you, the net capital change, the net option premium, net ca positive cash flow was seven hundred and sixteen dollars and sixty cents, which was far lower than I wanted it to be. Right? I mean, the last couple months has been two, three, four thousand, but still cash flow positive despite the issue, despite having to deal with that on the road, which is still a major win. And then year to date here, here are all of the transactions for the entire year, starting January 1st through now. You can see um, all the assignments are in here, all of the different um, QQQ, IWM, SPY, different transactions, all the way through 930. If you factor all of that in, total net cash flow, net option premium, including all capital gains, capital losses is $19,339.87. This is from a capital account of about $100,000, Total cash flow yield to the end of September is 24.95% on my capital. And then when you factor in the annualized return based on capital gains and losses, it's 26.80%. So the month of September, 2024, not a great one, but I still was cash flow positive despite all the things that happened. And then you got a little bit of a sneak peek into what the future looks like, what the strategies are like, and I'll be making sure to update those uh, with you guys on a monthly basis. Though, of course, if you want to get more of those updates, you can certainly join the Average Joe Investor Patreon community where I post all the updates on a daily basis. If you want to learn more, check out the link down in the description below. Also, make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. It's my goal to respond to as many comments as possible on the day I post a new video. I'm always curious to know your feedback. That's all I got for you guys. Have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching.